David Copperfield. We are thrilled David reached out to Magical Women and suggested this panel talk. It's my great pleasure to introduce David Copperfield. I don't know if the, the female factor is making it harder or easier or whatever, but it's hard to begin with. So, you know, and it's very, at the end of the day, for me, when it finally works, it's very rewarding. It's very, it makes it worth it. It's like the spark that Josephine said when she came out of the, the, the box the first time and that reaction, how different that was. You know, and it's not just that reaction, honestly. For me, it's not. It's more about the, for me, it's the same thing uh, as, uh, as Dania talked about. You know, if I can make the audience emotional or cry about something, that's when I'm happy, you know, because that's not normal for magic. If I can make an emotion, feel something that's not just the wonder moment. So the fact that you're searching for that thing that is beyond the wonder, beyond the amazement, beyond the trick. None of you guys are doing store-bought stuff. You're combining, at least combining it or doing something with it, finding the, finding the truth in it. And, you know, from in magic, you know, if we're fooling people, the truth, every single thing that all of you did, I guarantee you, that worked better than that is because you found the truth in it. And that's what the audience feels, the truth that they can relate to. In magic, unfortunately, you know, we're doing the same stuff other people are doing. You know, it's the same thing over and over again. Uh, and there's a real effort or dream to really, uh, you know, if you can do it, to find stuff that's really meant new things that don't look and feel the same. And that's that's has been important to me. Uh, sometimes I've broken the rule and I've tried to make the performance of it in a unique way. Um, if you ever saw Doug Henning do the origami box, he did it as a puzzle. And then I said, no, that's not right. You know, we're going to do this. And, you know, as a, as a beautiful dance thing that has kind of feeling and emotion and so forth. And if you look up the origami thing I did, it wasn't, that was kind of a revolution for me. And everyone started doing it that way, you know, or interlude, you know, the interlude thing. That's a classic thing that Jim Steinmeier invented. I changed the method. I did a totally different method. You know, uh, water levitation is about the feeling, the relationship between these two people. And that's was important, uh, but those are classic things that weren't mine, but I tried to make them mine by, by adding enough uh, originality to it to make it worth doing. Yeah, and I think you'll see that um, all, all four magicians do that. Every single person that's talked to here has something in common, and the common is to really not be satisfied. Carissa, how did you start? What was the seed of your magic? So I, uh, I've always been interested in magic. I was watching your specials growing up, and and it was amazing how I feel like the moment I stopped denying that I was a magician was the moment the world noticed me all at once. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's been a really weird <laughs> journey to hear because now everything feels like it's going at lightning speed. But I'm, I'm happy to finally admit I was a magician. But I think I was since six or seven. So, uh, Dania? Hi. You like to? Hello. We have, have we met before? No, we haven't met before. What it's about, you know, I've got a thing in the show with a dinosaur. It's not about producing a dinosaur. It's me hugging a childhood uh, thing that I lost. That gets right through. So I think, you know, in your work, when you do things like that, that's in the same kind of category of things that are relatable and things that can, people can hold on to. And um, yeah, so there you go. That's exactly what I, what I love to do with my magic. Yeah, Just and I think it's time. very, and it was really missing, you know, and now it's, it should be, that should be the thing that people are doing because that's what magic didn't have, you know. Moving on, Billy, how do you see this going? What do you want to do? What's your, what's the point of it all? Well, I think when I kind of, when I was introduced into the magic world and I didn't know anything about magic at all, like any trick could fool me, but it wasn't really about that. When I was experiencing watching other magicians, I didn't understand why it was so bad. Um, I mean, it sounds pretty harsh, but it's like, I love the magic. I love, I love the science. I love the methods of, I love what it does, but the performances are just terrible in my opinion. So I, and even to this day, I, I, I'm kind of, I'm very private with what I do and I don't really go into the magic community as much. And I, and I try not to, I don't know, expose myself in that way. Uh, so I thought if I can bring anything to magic, what drives me is, as I guess, kind of go back to what Danny says with, with the storytelling and magic for me was the first time as an actor, it was the first time I was on stage as myself. 
it's the first time where I'm I feel naked and exposed to an audience where I'm not pretending or relying on the fourth wall or my castmates or, or even a lighting or, or my stage man. that support isn't there so I've never experienced that before I think that was a draw also as an actor I stopped getting nervous on stage I was just so used to it and I thought that was a problem but I didn't know why but to this day, if I do a new routine or a new act or a new show, uh, I'm bricking it basically. <laughs> like I can actually physically make myself ill. I'm so nervous. So, so from a from a place of passion as well, and and I hope I can contribute something different with with I don't like using the word style, but with I guess with how I present the magic that I do. Josephine, have you had an experience where you tried something and you weren't sure, and then found the way? When you're used to so much physical movement you have to learn to stand still and I had to learn that silence it's so powerful but as a dancer silence is the most frightening thing because yeah. when you forget a move that's normally when you stop and that means you've gone wrong mm -hmm. that was that was a real learning curve you know, as as you create more things and you find more things uh you know your crutch as a dancer your crutch is to to do stuff that's your crutch yeah. you know you have you get strength from everything every time you touch that bar in class and every time you yeah. know you get strength of that so on that note fabulous i thank you i'm so honored to be here you know i'm keep i'll be standing there applauding for everything you guys are doing if you enjoyed this chat as much as i did and you haven't already subscribed and hit the notifications bell please do so Oh, and don't forget to comment. We love to hear from you and to receive feedback so we can grow and improve our Magical Women channel and project.